you've been in lockdown for months now. Perhaps you've ventured out of your apartment for the odd day trip here and there, maybe exploring some new areas of your city or a picturesque town nearby. But as flight restrictions are lifted, you start to dream bigger. Dreams of sandy beaches, foreign languages, explorations of cities you've never been to before. You start to tentatively plan a trip. You don't want to waste this golden opportunity. Who knows how long this lockdown window is before you have to recluse back into your shell like a crab. Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Tom. In this episode of the How Are You series, we're gonna be going through how I plan my trips using Notion. I'm a pretty seasoned traveler. I've motorbiked through India, Vietnam, I've traveled through South America and Asia. And over the years, I've really refined my system for planning trips. If you're interested in getting more videos about how you can use Notion to simplify your life, and subscribe as I release these quite regularly. On the menu today, uh, first we're going to be looking through some principles of planning a trip, looking at some of the most common mistakes I see which is over planning and under planning and then we're going to explore something which I like to call the Disneyland effect. Then we're going to dive into the Notion template that I use to plan my trips. So if you're just here for that reason alone and you want to skip all of the principles, by all means um, you know, click ahead and do that. And finally, what we're going to be doing is just talking about some pitfalls that you might have with this template and how to avoid them. So let's get stuck in. So why do we even need to plan our trips or holidays in the first place? The first thing that I want to talk about is under planning and I'm going to use a very personal example of mine of a case where I massively under plan for a holiday. It was the summer before last and I went on a motorbiking holiday with my mate and we went to India. Bearing in mind none of us had ever motorbiked before, we literally hadn't planned anything, we just bought the, bought the plane tickets and were like, oh fuck it, let's just go off, see what happens. Uh, we ended up getting there, we couldn't find any motorbikes, we had no idea of a route, and it was really just through pure luck that we managed to find this like tiny little shack, and this guy was an absolute saint, mapped us out you know, the exact route that we wanted to take, provided us with these really great motorcycles and helmets and gear and all that kind of thing. But even as we were going through the trip, we were constantly just running into people who were far better prepared than us. And I don't know if they respected us for our audacity or just thought that we were complete fools, but you know, we didn't even have like a spare tire or any way to service ourselves in a breakdown. It was a really fun trip, but it could have gone uh, a hell of a lot worse. So um, since then I've made sure that I always have at least some sort of structure in place uh, whenever I'm going on a holiday. Now, just as you want to avoid under planning, you also really want to avoid over planning. If under planning is like the fun loving sort of teenager who doesn't know what he's doing, over planning is like your dad taking you on holiday and you wake up in the morning and it's like, burr, 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 like this is what we're doing, everything is like time boxed by the minute and it just saps all of the fun out of it. It doesn't leave any room for exploration or adventure or free time. So you really don't want to over plan your trips too massively or it's just going to feel like a school trip or a trip that you might have done with your parents if your dad was uh, a militant kind of guy. Now the third principle of trip planning is what I like to call the Disneyland effect. I don't know if you remember the Disneyland adverts, maybe they're still going, but the tagline went something like, the magic begins the moment that you tell them. And I always thought that was actually quite powerful because what does actually the enjoyment of the holiday mean? Like when does it start? Is it just the time you're on it? And of course it's not, it's the moment leading up to the holiday, it's building of the anticipation. Um, and that's why I think trip plans can be really great to have because if you do it in enough detail and if you talk through it with whoever you're going, it can actually become a real source of enjoyment and excitement in itself. So now I'm gonna talk you through my template of how I've addressed these three principles of not under planning, not over planning, and building up a bit of uh, excitement with the Disneyland effect. So the first thing you'll notice about this template is it's in a board view with each column being a day of the week. And the reason why I love the board view over a list or a table is it just allows things to be dragged and dropped into different days so easily. So if you're having a really nice time one day and you know, you're just on the beach chilling and you don't fancy doing any of the activities that you have planned, it's not a problem, you can just move things about. And I think this is something that's harder to visualize when you've got a really strict list or an agenda. 
How I'll usually go around building up my board view is just having a couple of key things that I really want to do in the holiday and then build everything else around that. And I find that having these sort of big things that you know I really want to do and then the smaller things that, that fill up the spaces is just a really good way to approach a trip so you make sure that you get the most out of it. In the cards themselves, one of the first things that you'll probably notice is we have pictures. And there's no real reason for this, I just think that it looks nice. I think it's cool to be able to look at your trip, to be able to see something visual, to get you excited about this. And especially if you're going to be sharing this with somebody, I really just think having this nice visual component uh, is a really cool thing to have. And the beauty of the board view with Notion is you can actually uh, toggle the, the pictures to preview on, um, which means that they're always going to show up whenever you look into the board. Another great thing of having the board with these pages inside of them is within the pages themselves, you can put any details that you might want to have about the trip. I like to put in, for example, if I booked an Airbnb, just the reservation details. It just means that when you're going through the trip itself, it just takes a lot of the hassle out. I'm not navigating through emails and you know different screenshots that I might have taken. Everything is in one place, really easy to access, and there's no stress. Another great thing about Notion is it's embed of the Google Maps feature. So you can go into a page, you can put in the route that you might be driving. Because this is actually a road trip of Montenegro, there's quite a lot of uh, driving involved. So I've just made sure each of the driving um, sort of places, I put in a little Google map. So in the morning we can easily see, oh, it's an hour away, it's two hours away, that kind of thing. Finally, we have the dimension of the estimated cost. I don't use this for absolutely everything, but you know, for big expenses like the flights and the accommodation, it's really useful to have in there. And then what you can actually do is just switch to table view. And what that's going to show you is a sum total of all of your costs. So it becomes really helpful for budgeting. So this can actually be really great when you're in the stages of planning a trip, because if you've got a certain budget in mind, you can actually add and remove activities and just see how that's going to play into the general picture of your budget. One other great thing about Notion is you can easily share this with your friends just using the share link. Um, and I find this really helpful. You know, if I've got a trip with some friends or you know my girlfriend coming up, I'm always going to take the time to make one of these templates for them and I just find that it goes down really well. They think, oh, you know, how great you thought about this, you really put some time into thinking about the fun that we're going to have together. And then because the template's live and they can add and remove stuff, it just makes it a really good source for you to both, you know, as ideas come up, just pop stuff in, really sort of building that anticipation for the holiday before it begins. Let's talk about some of the pitfalls that you're probably going to want to avoid um, from using this template and I speak from you know experience here. These tools are very powerful and uh, unless you treat them you know with respect uh, then you're probably going to find that they actually do you more harm than good. So the first one is don't over obsess about getting this plan absolutely right. Actually I have to confess last night I was putting this together and I was really obsessing over the tiny little details, like the little icons, uh, making sure they're, they're just right. If you're a bit of a perfectionist, um, this can be a real drawback. So just have the awareness to think, you know, what is the purpose of this plan? How good does it really need to be? Um, and maybe not get too focused on the tiny details because as soon as you get into that mentality, uh, it's something that, that can actually become a little bit of a source of stress. The second pitfall that I also think you should just be aware of when using this is as well as making sure that you're not obsessing over the details of visually how it looks, also you don't necessarily want everything to be planned out you know, to the nines. Uh, you might want to have some breathing room, you might want to have a bit of time for you to just adjust to the new environment that you've got in or whatever it might be. Don't feel like every day has to be chock-a-block full of stuff. If anything, it's actually better if there is some free time for you to just sit, soak in the environment and enjoy the culture of wherever you might be. For me personally, that means I will never put restaurants into this plan um, because I like to just walk around, get a feel of the place, maybe, you know, ask some person at the place that I'm staying where's a good place to eat. And I also won't, you know, obsess over the details about like if I'm touring the city, the exact things that I'm going to visit, I might just put in walk around the city as a task that we might want to do that day. Thanks a lot for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you found that helpful. We've gone through some of the principles of putting together a good plan for your holiday, uh, starting with the not over planning, um, but also not under planning, and then looking at the Disneyland principle. 
Then we've gone through my Notion template, which I'll obviously leave uh, in the description below before talking about some of the pitfalls that you might want to avoid. If you found this video helpful, I'm gonna leave a playlist here with my other Notion guides. Uh, be sure to check them out if you enjoyed this one. Uh, thanks a lot and have a great day.